I got like 20 questions. I'm going to, I'm going to make you just, I'm going to grill you on this one because you put out a post on social. It was so juicy. And I felt like it was, you know, it didn't get the pickup because I don't think most people realize what you're saying is too, too complicated, but like, what, you know, that, that, this rumor, man, there's a lot of implications. Yeah. So let's step back here. So NVIDIA is the data center GPU training. And I think with generative AI inference King, uh, at this point, I think there was an article that said they had 95% data, sh data, uh, data center market share probably makes sense. Maybe it's closer to, I don't know, 90, but it's in the nineties. It's big, big, big. And, uh, as we've talked about many times on the show, there are different ways to do training and diff different types of technologies and chips. And I like to look at it as kind of a, a barbell, right? Infinite flexibility. You have the C the CPU, you can run basically anything. The most efficient over here is an ASIC, which stands for application specific integrated circuit. It does one thing and it does great. Now it's just hard to program and the GPU is, kind of in the middle, maybe a little closer uh, uh, to the ASIC. And just to confuse matters more, some people would call the GPU an ASIC, but let, let's not go there. So uh, the market right now uh, for custom ASICs, you have Broadcom and Marvell. And then on the merchant ASIC, right, you've got stuff like Intel, Habana, you've got Grok, you've got Untether, uh, companies like Untether AI. And we are seeing where it goes. Now, Dan, you and, you and I are always talked about uh, the AI ASIC being much more efficient and, and what's going on here. But the rumor says, and this was uh, came out of Reuters, that NVIDIA is chasing the $30 billion custom uh, ASIC uh, market out there. And yeah, I got a little bit provocative. And Dan, you read between the lines of what I was saying, which is, first of all, if this is true, totally justifies the market for data center AI ASICs. Been all GPU so far. Uh, NVIDIA already ships tiny ASIC blocks on its data center GPUs, and it's called Tensor Cores. And by the way, on their Jetson platform, they have uh, some specific, I think, uh, uh, ASICs for convolutional uh, networks. I, I forget what it's called, DLA maybe. Um, if this is true, you would totally expect NVIDIA play the CUDA compatibility software card. Because right now, uh, people are all in on GPUs because they can get at least three generations uh, of, of AI goodness out of them if we, if we look back historically. And naturally, if, if they were going to do that, they would, they would make this... Uh, compatible with the CUDA toolset, the CUDA frameworks, and the CUDA models when it comes to uh, generative AI. And the one thing I I, I just popped into my head uh, yesterday was where's AMD in all this? Right, AMD is the is a custom uh, ASIC provider, a custom SOC provider uh, to companies like uh, Microsoft and Sony. That seems like they would be phenomenal in something like this. But hey, we'll have to see what happens. I give it a 90% chance that NVIDIA gets into this custom market. Hey, hey Pat, so, so let me interview you really quickly here because uh, you, you, know, you haven't done a CNBC, so I'll, 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 be, I'll be CNBC, you're going to be there. But just how hard, Pat, is it to enter the custom market? Well, it's a huge, huge uh, commitment and, and typically in any custom ASIC market, uh, there is hundreds and hundreds of millions of R&D that you need to spend up front before you get anything out there. Time frame is key too. I mean, the quickest reasonable ASIC that I've seen to pop out of the oven is maybe four years after inception, maybe three on a, on a good day. Some companies will take what's called NRE, non-recurring engineering uh, payments up front. Uh, we've seen that for, for AMD. And when AMD did some of the first Microsoft and Sony ASICs or, or as a custom SOCs, um, they got big um, R&D payments that, that, by the way, made their gross mark, but they had to uh, take the cost in their gross margin, uh, which, which made the gross margin look low. But 
net margin business, it's it's really good. So net net, it's it's it, it's hard and it's a pretty big commitment because you're also saying you're going to support the software for a very long time. Okay, two more quickies. So for companies like a Marvell and a Broadcom, Pat, is this an attack or is this complimentary? So I think the market is so big that it would be it, it would be complimentary. I, I don't. I don't think this makes sense for for the big hyperscalers. Just to be, just to be uh, brutally honest, uh, they already have a way to get to get custom done. I don't I don't know I don't see yet the incremental value that Nvidia could bring over something custom. And it's hard for me to imagine how would it be custom if, if Nvidia is layering it. Uh, layering it in. It, it's hard for me to kind of wrap my brain uh, around that. All right. Well, listen, I, I, I've had fun interviewing you, Mr. Moorhead. Thanks so much for joining DNBC. Please have me um, on again. Listen, I, and there's a couple things too that, that occurred to me, but first and, and foremost is what you just said is, look, you know, the, the AIA sick by the hyperscalers, they're going to go down their own route. Um, what there is a little bit of an, an, an implication here that's super interesting, though, is we've heard, you know, DGX Cloud, uh, NVIDIA partnerships with companies like CoreWeave and others, like, you know, as they're, if you're building competition, there is a, you know, a benefit to potentially having this kind of IP and building. I also just, like I said, wonder, um, is it, you know, what's it about a $30 billion business? you know, if it's worth chasing and, and how much incremental they're going to get out of it and where the incrementals come from. It's not going to be so much from the enterprise. So I have to imagine there's some net revenue expansion coming out of kind of this new AI data center concept and being able to do it at scale. But it's going to be really interesting, Pat, because um, there's a lot of speculation as to what's going to happen next. I saw something, and this maybe transitions us really nicely to topic two, which is uh, Intel's IFS event that's coming up. 